Good morning, good evening, and welcome to World of Warships. My name is Robin, and today we will review a pretty intense replay of a ranked battle I had recently, featuring the tier 8 Japanese gunboat destroyer, Akizuki. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you will enjoy your time here. How is ranked treating you so far, eh? I'm having fun. It's actually my preferred game mode on PC right now, thanks to the intensity of some games and the fact that your actions have so much consequences on the outcome of a game that it's just a great learning training tool for becoming a better player overall. Sure, it's not always that great, especially with submarines and carriers being allowed in there. Though, it doesn't change the fact that ranked is the sort of blood pumping action I'm looking for in World of Warships. But today we are taking out a trusted warrior, Akizuki, which, well, I featured more than a few times already. But this game is not really about the ship, more about decision making. This match will be rich in crucial moments and pretty action packed all the way through actually. We are heading for A, which on this map, Islands of Ice, is the hottest cap around due to how close both teams spawn from it and the fact that it's almost impossible to cap early compared to the other two home caps, let's call them that way. Albeit we have above average HP, decent concealment for the tier and mostly excellent DPM for a destroyer, allowing us to dominate most 1 vs 1 encounters with other destroyers as long as we play our cards right. We've closed the gap to A and entered the action zone. We've been radio located for a while, but we are radio locating right back. You've had a peek at the matchmaker a few moments ago, so I'm either facing a Cossack or a Z23. We dump our torpedo through the cap and it doesn't take long for us to get spotted the moment the objective is being captured. We don't turn away though, I know I have the HP and gun advantage against both of these destroyers and I cannot let them get the cap unscathed. Cossack is revealed and we immediately start trading shots. If it was the Z23 I would have been in a tad more trouble considering German destroyers smoke and hydro trick, but Cossack smokes up allowing us to disengage. We do have an angle for our torpedoes which we will send in a widespread manner and before we turn away to avoid Cossack short range sonar, we are even able to land a few shells blind on the British destroyer. We even get an incapacitation ribbon, which makes me think we knocked out his engine. Pretty good trade, we dealt 7000 damage only receiving 4 back and one torpedo will actually connect, granting us first blood and devastating strike. Pretty lucky, I must admit, Japanese torpedoes are not the hardest one to avoid. Regardless, it's a fantastic start and basically an early win on the most important cap of the map. I don't want to head in just yet though, there is a Bismarck with pretty scary sonar and a Massachusetts possibly specced into secondaries. I will instead use the extra smoke given by the Yamamoto skill upon achieving first blood and start farming. This is an example of decision making for this game. First, I could assist the tier pits on capping and get early points ticking for us, even though the zone would take a while to capture with the reset mechanic and tier pits being contested. Or second, I could deal damage on one of the scariest battleships at the tier and try to get these fast reloading heals of Massachusetts depleted sooner. I choose the latter, but I already have to move. Yes, we could have stayed there a while and farmed the US battleship a bit more, even try to get some torpedoes into him if we were greedy, but Bismarck is already 8 kilometers away and pushing in. We have the concealment and speed to get away, but a few more seconds in there could have cost us a lot of HP. Not going for the cap was the right call in the end. Now though, we have to prevent the German battleship on making further progress. Oh, and uh, disclaimer here, that one torpedo I landed on the Cossack will be the only torpedo I'll hit all match. I've, I've been playing this game for a long time, but I still cannot get my predictions right. I think I'm too trigger happy with my torpedoes, I just send them in a spray and pray manner, even if it doesn't really apply to Akizuki, 
considering her low chip count, but I also think it's because I never really see torpedoes as a main source of damage, especially for gunboats. Anyway, we miss. And in the meantime, the enemy team has been quite busy. We've lost both our Maker and Kutuzov, not only making me the only destroyer left in our team, but also robbing us of our only cruiser and a pretty good one at that. So now, the B cap is threatened and we have yet to capture A. Hmm. Yes, we do have teammates able to defend B for a while, but looking at the minimap, our Atlantico would be in a 1 vs 3 situation, not ideal at all. Bismarck and Massachusetts are now both distances away from the A cap now, opening a potential window for me to capture it. Although, considering that one of our tippets is about to go down, and with enemy Bismarck on the offensive again, this could be tight. <laughs> As I said, no more torpedo hits this game. The German battleship possibly running hydroacoustic, I shouldn't even have tried to torp him in the first place. Our second tip, it's on the other hand, is pushing in the cap, and I intend to assist him. With the enemy Massachusetts also falling back to C, this makes the engagement a 1 vs 2, and we should be able to get rid of Bismarck without too much trouble. I do have extra charges of smokes as well, having secured the first blood early on, so my plan is to smoke up that Tirpitz if he wants to save his HP while using his secondaries against Bismarck. This would also allow us to secure A a bit faster without being reset and start ticking points in our favor again. Though <laughs> the execution of that plan is not going to be perfect. Tippitz wanted to keep shooting, understandably, making the smoke irrelevant for him. And in the process, I am also going to take some indirect damage. But here we are, I might as well start shooting. Now, I was not running IFHE on this build, but with Bismarck showing broadside anyway, I switched to AP and farm the superstructure. It is surprising uh, what destroyers can do with AP, even on battleships, nothing new. Akizuki is of course an exception with her insane DPM, but even some USN destroyers can put some serious hurt on most targets. In any case, Tippitz and I make short work of Bismarck as expected, and we are able to finally secure A and clear the enemy presence from this side of the map. 3 versus 4, but in the meantime the enemy team has secured B for themselves, and even Massachusetts has joined the effort against Atlantico. Now the Pan American battleship is still quite healthy and will be putting up a good fight for a little while longer, allowing Chipitz and I to figure out what is the next best move. One option of course would be to try and capture Charlie, but considering the horrendous speed of Akizuki, that might take way too long and even allow the Z23 to sail straight back to A, perhaps even before we can even reach C, so essentially we have to try and secure kills. Yeah, also, I am so sorry about the frames here. <laughs> I was recording this replay from my laptop, actually, and it seems OBS had a stroke. And I also was unable to record it again due to an update making the file incompatible. So we are stuck with this footage for this video. It gets better, but we're still gonna drop a few frames here and there. Anyway, back to the game. We realize that going for C is useless, and our Atlantico, whom I thought would survive a bit longer, is wiped under a minute by the combination of Zed's torpedoes and Bismarck's secondaries, so it is just Tippitz and I. I have to admit, I was expecting this game to end right here. With B uncontested, the enemy team has a chance to regroup and push straight back to A. And well, before I know it, Tallinn is already under 7 kilometers in front of me. I am caught without my smoke, so I engage immediately. I am willing to trade some of my HP if I can bring this cruiser down, since he was just little over 10k HP. Our guns can penetrate 27mm without AFHC, so Tallinn is just fair game at this point. We are able to get rid of the Soviet cruiser without losing too much HP, which is sort of a crucial point in this game. I was lucky Tallinn was already extensively damaged, otherwise I doubt I would have survived this engagement. I also tried to keep some cover from Massachusetts, which was last seen on our direct right. 
Limiting the amount of ships able to fire at you during engagements like this can prove to be quite effective. Though, we are forced to use our smoke to avoid Bismarck's return fire and secondaries. I will let my friendly tippets take the bulk of the heat in this engagement. Also, he'll have to spot for me so that I can wither down the German battleship. But we also have to worry about the incoming crossfire from Massachusetts, revealed a few seconds ago directly behind the island to our right. I am currently maneuvering so that I can initiate an ambush. If Massachusetts decides to push either side of that rock, I will be ready to meet him with torpedoes and we maintain fire on the Bismarck. Our tippet is under a ton of pressure, but the German battleship has turtle back and is basically designed for situations like this. We have no idea where the enemy Z-23 is, on the other hand. My APF is still pointing at Massachusetts, though, as we earn the high caliber medal, we are focusing on bringing the Bismarck down, switching to high explosive for the finishing salvos. For kills, you know what's happening next. With Massachusetts still focused on our tippets, I have to make a move and make it now. Torpedoes loaded, I will be pushing the side of this island for a point blank run. With only 8k HP left, this could be a terrible idea, but at this point, what do we have to lose? <clears throat> Except the game. As I pick the island corner, I will be aiming at the US battleship's bow with AP and switch to the stern for a quick kill. No need for torpedoes, actually. And that is our Kraken unleashed and a much needed heal. But is that enough? We already managed to turn a 2 vs 4 into a 2 vs 1. But if the German destroyer decides to run, I don't see us pulling a win out of this game. Our radio location is tracking and we can initiate a chase. Though once again with Akizuki's speed it would take us forever to catch up. I also have no idea on what HP the Z-23 is, and after a few blind fire into his smoke, I start closing up the distance. Now, with 8 minutes left on the timer, going for a cap could be the silver lining. But again, that would open up A for the German destroyer to capture and keep the points flowing for his team, so I have no choice but to try and catch him. A little bit of frustration in the chat on my part. I always expect the enemy players to do the right move, so I can be quite pessimistic at times. The tippets asking me for spotting data had me a little boiling, I guess. And here comes another decision with an impact. Instead of chasing the Z-23 with me, tippets can actually go capture Bravo. He'd then be safe from the Z's torpedoes with me providing screening. But my teammates take a little too long to react to this request and start turning the moment torpedoes arrive. And just like that, a salvo he could have evaded turns out to be sending him back to port. <laughs> really unfortunate because now the Z can run. Nothing else he needs to do this entire game. Even if I would go for a cap myself now, there still would be no time. But instead, Z23 cut on less than 2k HP is going to give us the win on a silver plate, instead of sailing to A1 and let the point pick. Decisions, decisions, hey? Possibly one of the biggest factors in ranked. Or in any World of Warships games, I would say. Not specifically damage or kills, even though they matter, but decisions is what I think win or loses games. 106,000 points of damage dealt, 35,000 XP earned, and almost a million credits gained. We achieved Devastating Strike, Kraken Unleashed, First Blood and High Caliber, out of 446 shells, 1 torpedo, 4 fires and a flood, defending and assisting in the capture of A, sinking the entire enemy team in the process. Overall, another display of the various strengths and weaknesses Akizuki can bring to tier 8 battles. And I hope that this game was a good example of how the ship can be commanded. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you for sticking all the way through. I hope you enjoyed your time and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you did not, well, thumbs down, but stay tuned anyway. As always, there will be more content to come about World of Warships. Until next time, you have a good one and you take it easy.